gamers and welcome back to Newcraft, my first ever private SMP experience here on Minecraft 1.18. So last episode, last episode we uh, built ourselves a potion shop and we built, uh, I've forgotten how many farms, I think it was something like six new farms to get all of the ingredients we needed in order to be able to produce all of the potions in the game and sell them in that shop. And yeah, we achieved that mission, and uh, it's been surprisingly popular since, actually. We've had quite a few sales, so very pleased with that. And the reason we are out here in the nether starting this episode is uh, because I want to start a blaze rod shop. Uh, it wasn't something I thought would actually be in demand, but as it happens, I've had quite a lot of requests of late to sell blaze rods to individuals for one reason or another and so I thought why not come out here stock up and make a shop out of it. So here we go we've got tons and tons of shulkers stocking up I'm just gonna fill these guys up and take all of these blaze rods back home I think I'm going back with about 10 shulkers full should be ample to keep us going and to restock my super smelter with fuel so once I've done here, I'm going to head back to the base and we're going to gather all the materials we're going to need to make ourselves a blaze shop. Alright, we have collected all the materials I think we're going to need to build this shop idea. And now we just need to find ourselves a little place to put it. So it's quite large, I don't think it's going to fit over here. Uh, it's going to have to be over this side. And my options, I think... One of these two slots would be ideal, I think. So, we're going to start a little time lapse here for the build uh, to show you its construction, and then I'll give you a uh, little tour of how this thing is going to work. See you in a bit. So here we have it, the finished article. My blaze shop is complete. <laughs> Quite a funny little character, isn't he? Something a bit different, not my usual style of shop by any means. It's not a building and uh, it's not a usual delivery system either. So uh, let me go grab a diamond quickly and I'll show you how this works. I think there's already been some sales. So we can go down here, bust on in. Aha, uh -huh, excellent. So, the way this works is, it is one diamond in the hopper gives you a stack of blaze rods. And that works simply by doing this. The signal by the diamond filter down there is captured, goes up there, and we see that these droppers underneath are just spitting out all of these blaze rods. And there we go, ka -ching, 64. Picked up 64 blaze rods, pretty cool. Uh, it's as simple as that, really. If you throw anything else in here, uh, it rejects it. And there's actually a output over this side. Gets a little messed up because of the stairs, but people will see the items like flickering around and hear the tick tick over here. So that works. If anything other than diamonds go in there, any diamonds that do go in there, they end up uh, going through this filter and they end up in this chest. So I already made one diamond. I think one of those was mine from testing and the other was... Uh, was it actual sale? Well, Gray was testing it for me as well. And that's it really. I stock up from the top and inside there that you saw in the time lapse, we have a pretty reasonably simple circuit. Um, the signal gets carried up, goes into a hopper clock and that hopper clock powers a pulsing circuit for a specific time, just enough time for these droppers to spit out a total of 64, so 16 rounds around the timer. Uh, spit out enough of those guys down here onto the floor for you to pick up. And that's it. That's my blade shop. Bit of a different concept, a bit of fun, but I'm hoping people get a bit of a blast out of it, even if it doesn't see much business. It was uh, a bit more of a creative and fun thing to do with a shop idea. I'm very happy with that. 
I wanted to give a quick shout out to Zui Mama, who is the uh, creator of this mob statue. He's my go-to guy whenever I look for a mob statue design in Minecraft. And uh, yeah, his his design here I took and modified and stuffed full of all of my redstone. So thank you for the inspiration. So one of the things we've been wanting to do on the server for a little while is tidy up the end. Now this is going to be a community project and a lot of work has already been done. So let's head on over there and I'll show you where it's at. Okay, so a lot of work has already been done, as you can see here. We've built this incredible ring all the way around after defeating the dragon all the times. And uh, this ring is the beginning of a construction that will allow us to access, easily access all of these uh, portals to the different end places and deconstruction work has already begun here but it's been pretty manual with a combination of TNT and picks and as you can see all we succeeded in doing is making a big old mess really so we need to step this up a level we need to do something a little bit more organized uh, we also need to remove all this bedrock at some point, but we can do that later. First things first, we're going to clear this guy out and take away the entire end island, leaving only this ring and the center portal, of course. So, uh, I've come out here with enough materials to try building a TNT duping flying machine that is going to run a course across here. I'm just going to do a test strip first, see if it works, and from there, uh, I can make it bigger, expand it, and think about what we will do to remove the rest of this guy. Now, before we can properly get a flying machine in here, we do need to take a little bit off the top because uh, our initial experiments with TNT here have proven that this stuff flies everywhere. Uh, Endstone is surprisingly resistant to uh, blasts and uh, so the TNT doesn't blow up as much for it in one go, making the TNT fly all over the place. So. We're going to take off a couple of layers here, and we're doing a lot of it with TNT. Unfortunately, the ring is taking a little bit of damage. We probably shouldn't have built that first, but we are where we are. Ooh, look at it go. Nice. And so French and I proceeded to build the flying machine that has got the TNT duper and is going to help with eradicating the end island here. Now, uh, we built it at one very edge of the island and it goes the entire length, hits a return platform on the other side, which shifts it along one block and sends it back this way. And this starting platform does the same thing, nudges it one block across and it goes back the other way again. So it moves horizontally one block at a time and bit by bit just carpet bombs the entire island, removing all of it, we hope. So this is going to be our very first test. This could be your, the death of you, French. You could just explode and I'm going to record it. <laughs> Sacrifice him. Nine, seven. Those natural geographic shows. <laughs> Six. Um, Five. Well, you know the cameraman is like Four. filming animals starving. Three. <laughs> two. <laughs> one. Lift off. <laughs> oh, it's going the wrong way. Oh no, it's fine. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's working. I can't see the machine. Oh, and there it is. It wasn't rendering. It seems to be working. So French travels across the island one block at a time, being shoved along, dropping TNT as he goes. There were definitely a few hiccups along the way, and uh, despite our best efforts to level off a few uh, levels of the end islands to stop the TNT bouncing back up, it did bounce back up quite frequently and break this thing. So. Yeah, I lost count of how many times we had to rebuild this machine back at the start, but we did it. And eventually we got it running pretty smoothly without any hiccups. And so it wasn't long until I just started taking things over, because this is an AFK able thing, and I just wanted to make things sure things were set up and I could uh, go about my, my day. I'll leave this thing running, and leave it running, we did. 
here's some footage of that uh, continuing to run for several days, flat out. like that the end has ended it is all gone the main island at least uh, and the portal in the center here of course there's still a few uh, bits of bedrock where the obsidian towers were we've just got a little landing strips on each of those ready to do the bedrock removal trick that's next that should be pretty straightforward but um yeah the end island is gone and this is uh troubling <laughs> it's uh, very disconcerting flying around this place now that there's just nothing in it except this giant ring it looks super cool but uh it's disconcerting when you are flying through it and not knowing where anything is but for now we're done uh, I don't know how many hours that took, something, several days worth of all day AFKing really with that machine to get all the demolition done, but done it is. We can finally head on home, offload our stuff, and uh, now we can get to the building of the end, which uh, it's a project I want to help with, but I won't be leading. A few others on the server seem to have taken passion for some ideas, and I'm going to be helping out where I can, but we're going to leave that to uh, probably Dr. Cass, French, and Truta are going to be the main, main people in charge of that effort, I believe, leaving us to crack on with a few things of our own. I was just about to go out on a little uh, trip and notice this. Someone's left me something. Oh, a little bit late, sorry, I didn't spot it before. But happy Easter from somebody on the server, anonymous gifter. What have we got? Oh my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. I need this more than you can imagine. With all the end destruction that was going on, uh, I accidentally lost my redstone box somewhere. So this is going to be so incredibly helpful. That's going to rejuvenate my redstone uh, situation and give me a nice starting point for a new redstone box. So thank you, whoever that was. So there are a few things that I wanted to check off my list for this episode. And um, one of them, one of them is right here behind me. You see that little bad excuse for a bed lying down there next to the anvil in front of all of those hoppers? That's where I'm sleeping. That is my bed in this amazing, enormous, wonderful base. I don't have anywhere to rest my head. I just come in and I sleep in that little bed because it's the closest thing to me. Now, I want to make myself a proper room for this. And so I've been thinking about where it could exist. And there's space above me. Below we've hollowed out. We've got the smelter, we've got the storage rooms, and then we've got the, even under this, we've got all of this space in here, but this is mostly for farms and brewing setups and other things that I'm going to start introducing into the base over time. But uh, in terms of somewhere spare that we've got to work on, I was thinking up here, so above the storage system, there's nothing. It's just this set of stairs going up here. And I wanted, I really wanted to try and do something maybe inside here was the thinking, that this would be my bedroom and I would create some access into it, probably from the outside, but also from the inside, that uh, we've got this space at the back here. I could, I could maybe go up through one of these. I know there's a lot of redstone in between there. I'm gonna have to go back there and have a look, but definitely at the back here, I've got room to go out and in between the storage system uh, modules and make some stairs coming up and out the back. So that's very much a possibility. Yeah, around the back here, I've forgotten how tight everything is. I think there's literally, 
like a one block gap in between the modules. This is the better option. So in the corner here, behind everything, we could punch a door into this guy and create ourselves a walkway because we've got space and that could spiral up and go into the ceiling up here. So I'm going to get some scaffolding, start making some holes. I might start from the top down actually and uh, figure out exactly where this room is going to be and what we're going to need to access it. So at the top of my base here I have hollowed out the inside of this a little bit and created a really nice space pretty close to the top of my storage system. There's the roof of the storage room just uh, one two three blocks beneath. I have the option of putting in a glass floor, I guess, and being able to see that from above. Let's go have a little peeky, sneaky peek. What's down here? Probably not worth it. It's just sandstone and a whole bunch of uh, composters. Nothing, uh, nothing particularly fancy or noteworthy, but at least I know I can go down a little bit further if I want to. And then I need to figure out access. How do I want to get in and out of here? So I'm going to want some windows, that's for sure. The only place I can really do that is on this side. So I think I'm going to put in some glass in one of these strips or two, just to give me a nice view outside. And then I do have the option of maybe like going in this way. And that's my main door, like straight through the center of the stairs along this gold strip. And just like that we have a room fully decorated. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. A little bit plain on the walls right now. We need to do something about that. But um, it's a room. It has a floor, a ceiling, some walls and is lit. And it sort of has a motif that continues from the outside which I quite like. And uh, even across the ceiling. So that's the the one in the floor above. Um, I quite like this. I did some windows. You can peek out. I need to do a bit of leaf work outside. But um, next, we're going to decorate this place. So I'm going to zip in here with some bits and bobs, and we're going to try and make this look uh, super cool. All right. So we've made some good progress here on the very top of the base, and let's go have a look, see where we are at. Okay. Check it out. This is my new bedroom. Still needs a bit of work, um, but it's getting there. This front area is devoid of anything really right now, other than a floor and some walls. But I've been working quite hard on the back area here. I wanted to keep it kind of open concepts, like create a space you need to walk through, but without it being, you know, really walled off and making it feel condensed. And I quite like that effect. Some lighting, using some wheat and some bamboo, and then we have our bed. Look at this guy. Really enjoyed this. I did my first little play around with some armor stands. So I created some pillows with wool blocks on armor stands and a blanket down here at the bottom of the bed um, with some carpets on armor stands. Uh, still a little bit to do, I think, but I think it looks really great. We've now got a front door and we've also got a way in and out of here without having to use that front door. So when we want to go down, we have ourselves a little drop chute straight onto a hay bale and out we pop right there. We can have a little peek around the back of the storage system as well, whenever we need to from here. And then to get back up, we've got a water elevator on this side. Whoop! Pretty cool. Uh, I wanted to quickly show off how I did that as well, because uh, how do I even get in there anymore? Give me a sec, I'm going to go run behind there. So in putting in this water elevator, I accidentally washed away a whole bunch of redstone here, um, and so I have since encased it in glass. There we go, check that out. It's uh, held in place with glass panes all the way up on all the sides. And I think that's quite a cool effect. Unfortunately, you can only really see it from this side of things. Uh, it doesn't, uh, when you're inside it, you can't really see out very much and doesn't uh, do much to the effect, but it's quite cool nonetheless. It beats having it in totally encased in glass for a change. So I'm probably gonna keep on working on this and put some more stuff in here in particular and yeah just keep decorating it up really see how cool we can get this little room looking 
but I do like it a lot and I can always fly in straight into the very top of the base and land right here in order to get inside. I love it. Now, there's one little thing I wanted to finish this episode off with and that is a memorial. So this here uh, it's going to go. I don't think I'm going to keep the beacon, or at least this part of it. I might uh, put a beacon somewhere on the top of the base and have it uh, emitting the beam and giving me the benefits. However, I do want to uh, make a little memorial to my loving cat, Jethro. Now, Jethro has been one of our best friends in our house for the past eight years. He's a British blue Burmese kitty cat and yeah, he was just one of our best friends and we're devastated to have lost him. He, uh, he suffered from uh, diabetes and uh, had pancreatitis as well, a couple of complications and ultimately got the better of him. So in memory of Jethro, I'm going to build a little memorial here, not dissimilar to the one I made for Cass, but a very special one for my boy. my boy Jethro sitting pretty atop the temple. Much more fitting than a beacon I think. I absolutely love it. I need to do a little bit of terraforming around here because he's a grey cat and when I put a grey cat on front of grey stone he kind of just blended in a little bit. Needed some contrast and I might continue to work on this and finish off more of the cliff face. I just wanted to do enough of it for the time being to make it passable and to see a nice little concentration there. It really draws the eye straight in and his eyes render as you get closer. Bless him. Thank you, Jethro. You will be missed. You were an amazing companion, an amazing character and a loving animal. We thank you. Finishing touches, just gave him a little button nose and finally, I'm gonna give him a little Collar. There we go. Jethro shall live on for eternity in Minecraft. All right, so I think we're going to leave that one here for today. I want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. We certainly achieved an awful lot. We got ourselves a new shop. We destroyed the entire End Island. Uh, we built ourselves a bedroom. And we put Jethro atop the bedroom at the very top of our base here, which I am super happy about. Love it. Okay, so next episode, I think we're going to go over this way a little bit. And Harlock has been up to something new over here. So Harlock is responsible for building all of this. And all of this. And all of this and all of this and now he's turning his attention to an entirely new castle build I believe on this plateau over here he's penciled in a bridge and I have volunteered after he asked me to help start this thing so this will be our big project next time we're going to make this bridge look amazing so if you want to see that then stay tuned and uh, we'll see you all in the next episode. Take care for now. Bye-bye. Aha, it's night time. The perfect time to finally get rid of this random bed I've just been keeping down here and go use my new one. 
Oh, I love it. Ah, oh, somebody beat me to it. <laughs> Next time.